Hey, good morning. If you're watching this, I just want to tell you, first off, God loves you. God is sitting on the throne of glory. God is in control. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning and He is the end. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, is sitting at the right hand. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't care what's going on in this world today. I don't care how wicked and evil it is. I serve a God who is in complete control. Jesus holds the keys to death and to hell. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look, I want to praise God right now because there are so many revivals that are going on around this nation. And it's just an absolute absolute beautiful thing and if you are a Christian today and you haven't told anybody this week about Jesus Christ I've got to say shame on you shame on you how can you have the best thing that has ever happened to you the gift of salvation the blood of Jesus covering you and you not tell a single soul about it do you know that the Bible says that their blood will be on your hands? Every person that you come in contact with, that you're related to, that you're friends with, that you have any type of a relationship or association with at all, if you do not share the gift of salvation with them, the Bible says their blood will be on your hands. And if that doesn't scare the mess out of you and, and put a fire in you, to do something different about it I don't know what will but there is a revival that is taking place it is sweeping across this nation hallelujah the spirit of God is on the move the word of God says that in these the last days God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh and ladies and gentlemen I am here to testify I am here to verify that the word of God is true because the spirit of the Lord is moving across this nation and people are being saved people are being baptized and people are being delivered by the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah thank you Lord and if you want to sit around idly by, sitting on your hands, more worried about what so-and-so says on Facebook than you are about what's going on, about doing work for the kingdom of God, then shame on you. The Bible has a word for you. It's called lukewarm. You're lukewarm. If you aren't, if you aren't on fire for, for God, for the kingdom, if you go to church every Sunday and it's business as usual you mumble you know a couple verses of amazing grace or whatever and there's absolutely nothing that changes in your life you are lukewarm something is wrong you need to get on an altar you, you need to get on your knees wherever you're at and cry out to Jesus and say Lord I need you Lord forgive me because I've allowed that fire to die out inside of me if you got saved when you were five years old but you haven't been to church but five times this year and you're in perfect health, something's wrong. You can't, you can't be a child of the Lord and not want to be in his house worshiping him every time that the doors are open. You're too worried about taking your boat out and catching a stupid fish than you are about going out into the world and catching men, being a fisher of men as, as Christ called us to do. Go out and be fishers of men. Isn't that ironic that most of the disciples were fishermen? Not all of them, but some of them were. And Jesus went fishing with them. Like, he, he basically told us to do the exact same thing. He used, like, true fishing, casting a net or a line in the water as an analogy to go out and, and catch men, catch the lost souls of this world with the truth of the gospel. And what are you doing? What are you doing for the kingdom? What are you doing for the kingdom? If you can sit here and, and say, you know, I haven't told anybody about the Lord this week. You haven't done jack sprat. <coughs> there, I'm telling you folks, there is a revival sweeping across this nation. I'm sorry, I got distracted back there. There was people in the road. I lost, my train of, I lost my train of thought, so forgive me. But this isn't about me. 
I'm trying to let the Holy Spirit speak through me, okay? He, I want him to use my lips to say to you, whoever's watching, what you need to hear. And I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit will convict you, that you will move upon those words that you will hear, and that you will rise up, and that you will be obedient for the kingdom of God. Do not ignore the Spirit. Don't quench the Spirit. If the Spirit is moving, move with Him. Move for Him. Don't resist Him. Because I'm telling you, that's a dangerous thing. You say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm too busy. I've, I've got stuff going on. Uh, i I got to do this. I, my kids got 18 ball practices I've got to get them to today. Uh, dance recitals, this and that. Yeah, I, I'm, I plan on taking my buddies fishing this Sunday. You need to stop all of that right now in the name of Jesus and say, no, I'm going to go to work for the Lord. I am going to go to work for the kingdom. There's lost souls out there that are hungry for the truth. They are looking for something to fill an emptiness and void inside of them. They're turning to drugs and alcohol and, and sex and all of that stuff that, that the world has to offer them. And they're busting the gates of hell wide open every single day because you're sitting on your butt not doing anything about it. You're sitting on your butt not, not sharing Jesus with others. You say, well, I can't win the whole world to Jesus. Well, no kidding. Nobody asked you to. But to go out and, and to reach the ones that, that God has put in your direct path. You've got family members that probably don't even know that you're a Christian. You, you probably, you've got uh, <clears throat> fellow workers or employees that don't know that you're in, that they don't know that you're a Christian. They don't even know you've got a church. Some of you, if you you know, if we was to go and and and, and get somebody that that's close to you <coughs> and say, "Do you know that so and so is a Christian?" They're gonna be like, "What?" Let me tell you the joke that he told me yesterday. He's a Christian? What? That'll be that that would be like literally their reaction. Or the fact, <laughs> you're joking, right? That guy's not a Christian. No, nah, man. He was at my house all last weekend, plastered, drunk, laid out on the floor. We got pictures of him. Oh man, it was so great. He was so tore up. He got up Sunday morning, throw it up, puking all over the floor, man. It was a blast. Oh, no, bro, that guy's not a Christian. Come on, get out of here. You're pulling my leg, right? I mean, seriously, that's. I'm not trying to be funny, but that would be like an example of some of the reactions that we would get. You claim to love Christ, but you don't claim it around those that you know. You don't claim it around your, your co-workers, your family members, your friends, your neighbors, the clerk down the street that you see every single day. And God knows what they've got going on in their life. They could be on the verge of committing suicide because they just feel hopeless. They feel like there's nothing they can do. They work this dead-end job <coughs> just for a paycheck every week so they can turn around and give it back to the man. And then they just, they just feel hopeless. They feel lost. There's nothing nothing that satisfies them. And you claim to know Jesus. You claim to be, to be saved. And you are. Maybe you are. But you don't even share that with them. You say, hey, man, I can't fix everything that's in your life, but I've got something that, I, I know somebody that can. I know somebody who will help you. I know somebody who will love you. I know somebody who will never leave you nor forsake you. I know somebody who loved you so much that they died on the cross for your sins so that you would not have to spend an eternity in hell. I know that person. I know somebody who can do that for you. I don't have a million dollars to give you, but I've got Jesus, and that is far greater than all the money in the world. But you refuse. Why? I'll tell you why. There's two reasons. A, you're just absolutely selfish and you don't care anything about others as you should as a Christian, which I don't know. Are you even considered a Christian at that point if you don't care about the souls that are around you? Or B, it's because you're ashamed of the gospel and you're too much of a coward to say anything. Yeah, I said it. I'm not trying to be ugly, but how is it that in college campuses, whether they're secular or private, or Christian, whatever, how is it that revival can break out among young people 
But many adults in the church world today can't even tell their neighbor, can't even invite their neighbor to church, let alone tell them about Jesus. Mm. I'm so sick and tired of it. Praise God for the revivals that are going on. Praise God. And I hope that it sweeps across this nation. And if you don't have anything to do with it, that's no sweat off of my back. But I want to be a part of this of, of this of this revival movement that's happening. I want to tell others about Jesus. I'm telling you, <coughs> if you don't have Jesus, you can have him today. What's stopping you? There shouldn't be anything. Okay? The Bible says all have sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That includes me. I was a sinner. We are born into this world as a sin because of the curse of sin that fell upon man because Adam and Eve screwed it all up in the beginning in the garden. Okay? That's, that's just how it works. But thank God he loved us enough that he, was, he, was willing that he wasn't willing that any of us should perish. Therefore, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. And all we've got to do is, is trust and believe in him and accept the gift of salvation. It's not hard, folks. It's not hard. You don't have to have any qualifications. You're already qualified. You're a sinner. <coughs> to become a Christian, you must be a sinner. To become a Christian, you must believe and repent. It's that simple. You don't have to have a master's degree. You don't have to have six figures in the bank. You don't have to have 18 cars and three boats. You don't have to have, you know, a beautiful wife and children or, or a handsome husband and children and four dogs and three cats. You don't have to have a job making more than $30 an hour. None of that. God wants us to come just as we are. I don't care if you just woke up after, you know, being drunk or high for three days and you're buck naked laying in your own vomit and feces because you got so tore up on alcohol and drugs that you just, you lay there and you couldn't move. I don't care. God wants you to, to rise up out of that mess, literally, and call on to him. He will accept you just as you are. He's not going to say, no, thank you. You need to go uh, get a shower, get cleaned up, brush your teeth, comb your hair, and put some clothes on, please. And then you can come talk to me. No, that's not how it works. You remember the Bible? The man that was possessed by demons running around buck naked, and, and you know people were, were afraid of him? What did Jesus do? Jesus didn't say, "Buddy, go put some pants on. Where are your where are your where are your britches at?" Please. God shield my no. He had compassion on the man because he knew that he needed to be saved. He knew that he needed to be delivered. He knew that he needed to be set free. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what you look like, what you smell like, what you wear, how much you weigh, how tall you are, what color your skin is, where you're from, none of that. Jesus wants you to turn to him today. Give your heart to him. Give your life to him. And let him change you. And be that spark that lights the fire. Be that spark that lights the fire and spreads the revival in your town, in your city, in your county, in your state. Same with you, Christian. Get off your butt. Start reading the Word of God more. Start praying more. Stop skipping church on Sunday to go out on your stupid boat. That's going to burn in the fire of God's wrath anyways. And it ain't going to be long before that happens. Stop keeping Jesus from the world. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, <coughs> excuse me, I will be ashamed of you before my Father. Can, I mean, I don't know what that what that's going to look like. But someone ashamed of Jesus, you, you stand, you, you're standing in heaven one day in eternity, and Jesus sees you, and you're like, oh my goodness. Father, please, let, excuse me, I, I, I can't be in your presence while this person is, is present. I'm, I'm, they were ashamed of me after I died for them and gave my life for them. I shed my blood for them. I defeated death for them. 
They were ashamed of me, God. Forgive me. Please excuse me, Lord. Excuse me, Father. I don't know what he's going to say. I don't know what that's going to look like. But the Bible specific. If the Bible says that Jesus is going to be ashamed of you, he is going to be ashamed of you. And when you're, you know, you think about your child, you know, they, they go off and they, they do something, they do something crazy. Let's say they got, in, they got in a wreck because they were drinking and, you know, they got arrested. And there, everybody, all your friends on Facebook, all your family, your coworkers, the church family, everybody knows about it. You're going to be ashamed of, of what they've done. It's, everybody's been ashamed of something in their life. So you know what that feeling feels like. Jesus Christ says, <coughs> excuse me, in his word, that he's going to feel the exact same way about you. The son of God. Ashamed of you. Are you willing to accept that? Are you willing to endure that? Are you willing to experience that? Because you're afraid of what Johnny down the street is going to say about you? About what your buddies at work are going to say about you? Seriously. You either love Jesus or you don't. You either believe the word or you don't. And Jesus said you're either for him or against him. And if you're not telling others about him, if you're not sharing the gospel with people daily, don't tell me you're for him. You're working against him. You want to know why? Because you're allowing the devil to continue to operate in other people's lives around you because you refuse to share the truth of the gospel with them. You refuse to give the Lord a chance to change your life. The Lord a chance to win them over. You refuse to do it. That's how. So thank God, yes, thank God that his spirit is moving in this nation. And I don't care how wicked this world is. There is hope for it. But you got to want it. And thank God for the ones that do want it. Thank God for the ones that are that have spent countless hours just worshiping and praising the Lord, the souls that are being saved. Thank God for that. And I'm telling you, besides sitting around thinking, man, I wish that could happen here, get up and make it happen. In the name of Jesus. Be the one. Be the one. How awesome would it be to get to heaven one day and instead of Jesus being ashamed of you he's like hey look there's the one that started that mass revival in their hometown there's the one that went out they, they started they started reading my word on the street corner and then so and so showed up and then so and so after them and then a, a small group and then a larger group and then eventually it was half the town and there was this Beautiful, <clears throat> months-long revival, years-long revival. The revival doesn't have to end, by the way. <clears throat> that 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 took place, and they're the ones. They're the ones that started it, because they loved me enough, and they believed. They went out there and they preached, and shared the truth of the gospel. How beautiful would that be, to be that one that Jesus acknowledges. We're not in it for our own glory, folks. We're in it for his glory, for his kingdom. It, it, none of it's about anybody on this planet. It's all about Jesus Christ. And it's time we make it about Jesus Christ. Stop making it about yourself. Some of you need to stop living that self-life <clears throat> and give self to Jesus. You need to give all of yourself to Jesus. You need to surrender 100%. Because if you can't surrender all of you to Jesus, who's getting the other 25% of you? If you're only surrendering 75%, who's getting the other 25%? But hey, Jesus, it can only be one other person. And I think you know who I'm talking about. So I encourage you today to... To get on fire for the Lord. Start sharing the Lord with others. 
I don't care who would, I don't care where or how you do it. Just do it. Go down to the grocery store. Go down to the gas station. Go down to Walmart. Go to the mall. If you're in school, go to your school. But don't back down. There are people in this nation who live certain lifestyles and you know, if something, if someone speaks out against their, <clears throat> their group, if you will, they get out here in the streets acting buck wild and crazy, setting things on fire. They'll stay out there for days on end, standing for what they believe in and their rights. But, but, but the church crowd, <laughs> you can hardly get them to, to make it through a, a full hymn in, in, during the church service. They can hardly make it 45 minutes through a, through, through a message without falling asleep. I don't get it. I don't understand. But it's time that the church wakes up. It's time that we get on fire for Jesus because the fire started. But let's spread it. Let's reach all the nations. Go ye into all the world, into all nations. Come on, I'm encouraging you right now. To pray and ask God to give you, the, you know, ask God to give you the unction, give you the courage, give you the strength, whatever you need. But get out there and do it. Be the light. Be the one. Stop hiding Jesus from this world. Anyways, I pray for everyone that watches this. I pray that the Lord blesses you. And if you're lost, I pray today you will find salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Jesus is waiting. I don't care what you've done, what you've said, where you've been, none of that. It does not matter. What matters is that you, you know, you're repentant, you believe on Jesus Christ, you call on him to save you. That's what matters. Jesus is waiting. So I encourage you to reach out to him today. He loves you. He loves you so much. He doesn't want you to go to hell. But unfortunately, we're we're all born sinners. And we can't change that without him. Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man's going to come to the Father. No man will enter into the kingdom of God without Jesus Christ. So I encourage you today to please find him. To please accept him. And again, if you are a Christian, if you have Jesus... Share him with somebody today. Please. I beg you. God bless you and thanks for watching.